Good evening, and welcome to Release Your Wings. I'm Dan Bagley, and tonight I'll be interviewing Veronica McHugh on a topic that may be interesting to you. It's about belonging. Do you feel you belong when you go to a group? So, Veronica, it's good to have you here. Thank you, Don. Nice to be here. Uh, you feel like you belong. Oh, <laughs> uh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what is the nature of belonging? Is it really as critical as some, uh, like Stanford psychologists tell us, that as much as food and shelter and all, a need to belong is basic to our human nature? Is that, does that match your experience? I would think so, both at a biological and a an emotional or a spiritual level that uh, it is very, very necessary. It is a natural part of, I think, the human experience. It should be almost a right that everyone has so, to the feeling of belonging. So that right, how do we, do we need to claim it or is it the community that extends has, has the duty to reach out its own? Well, if you look at it and it's very, basic um, element, then as soon as a child is born, it belongs, that it's embraced, uh, hopefully, by its uh, parents and uh, that family and by the wider community, you know, and you see this happening in, could be a village in Africa, it could be a little Absolutely. town in Ireland, and where the, uh, in a sense, the child actually belongs to the whole community. It isn't just the yeah. offspring of its mother and father. You know, you said biologically and then bringing the offspring people, uh, possibility here. The brain chemical oxytocin is a bonding thing mm -hmm. that happens yes. with uh, mothers and children particularly, but I, I suspect having been at the birth of both of my children, it happens to any participating father as well and maybe the whole village in that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, now, here's the question, mm. or here's the observation, then the question. That leads to the studies that suggest, that have shown, that a child who is not touched, is not held, as you described, really and truly has... Does not... Is not going to flourish. Is not going to flourish. Yeah, in a funny way, we're all that child, even though we have more years under our belts. Now. Yes, and I would even say that this is something that happens in the animal community as well, uh -huh. that if the offspring, the little kitten or the puppy or whatever, mm -hmm. isn't nourished or nurtured, then there will be something a little bit off in its personality or whatever else, that something is missing. It should be nature intended it as a right. I think you're, I think you're exactly on target there because we've, we've probably seen on YouTube or, or something like that where there will be uh, an animal like a duckling <laughs> that will imprint on a cat really? or, and follow it around. Mm -hmm. And so that is the need to of yes. animals and humans to say, I need to find somewhere where I feel accepted. Where I feel accepted, where I'm seen, where I'm seen and where I'm heard. Ah, now you that's know. an interesting thing, which means that the act of listening then is an act of loving of sorts because you are opening up your your mental, your heart, hand to that person yes. saying, I acknowledge you. I acknowledge you, yeah. So how do we choose, I mean, we've got the community and then we've got the people who may or may not be part of the community. How do we make it easier for people to join and to feel like they're being included? Well, let's... Um also um, consider that they may not want to be included. In other words, you have, uh, I was just doing a, there was a little quiz that I was doing yesterday and, and uh, it was to do with charisma and uh, whether you had charisma or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, not surprisingly, fell in the mid-range, <laughs> you know. And uh, they posited on the one hand that, that perhaps you're a bit shy, but on the other hand, maybe it's just that you like to be alone. So. And so there can be that aspect as well. And so someone who perhaps is capable of being by themselves, um, that they're not 
necessarily dependent on a community, mm -hmm. but yet wherever they are and in whatever circumstances, they always feel they belong. Yeah. And that those other people will feel that they belong to them and will say, you would make a really good Christian or you would make a really good German or whatever right. it happens to be because they have the nature of feeling at home and belonging to themselves. Which may come down to the question of is one of the ways we connect with others based on our values? I would definitely say so. One thing is, uh, and this is then the, the process of life, because as we established that um, you should have the feeling of belonging as a, as a child, should. And, but then as you grow up, and, and so you belong just by virtue of the fact that you were born into that religion, into that home, that community, etc. But then as you become more individualized, and you get older and um, you start going, moving out into the world and taking on perhaps another type of identity, seeing yourself as more than just the community, not above the community that you were born into, but knowing that that of itself would never be enough to sustain you. And so everyone, I, I think that within most people that do go out, there is some kind of a longing. Uh -huh. To reconnect or connect uh, That's at right. A and level. that longing is uh, at another level about belonging. Mm -hmm. And so the longing is for something more than just a, a, a tangible um, community, for instance, or, but it is something deep within the soul. Right. And but it's it has to break on another free level. from the initial. Yes, it has to break free from the initial. Yeah. And then there's, there's constantly a redefining of oneself. Mm -hmm. And um, to just go back to what you were saying, that yes, the, the belonging will be connected um, if it is with a group of people. It will be connected with uh, values, or it could even be connected with a lack of values. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, it's, you know. I think that there needs to be some commonality because, well, for example, uh, if we have season tickets to a football game, uh, there may be people in our area that we see every week during the season yes. that we're jumping up and high-fiving <laughs> and hugging and all of that that we probably don't hang out with. Uh, out of the context of the game. Yes. But we dearly love them in that context. Right, because um, within that context, we do have a purpose. Yes. So we, are both, we are both celebrating or rooting for the same team. Uh -huh. You know, but when the game is over, then there's no more purpose. So that's right. an interesting thing. So one so of the, the values is... is one of the things. Yeah, that values, That purpose. will um, bring us yeah. together. So that breaking free of the initial and coming to yet a higher, a higher, and it sounds like it's moving up, it's different mm -hmm. to reestablish new identities, that's really what adolescence is about. Yes, it is, isn't As it? As children say yes. angrily to their parents, <laughs> I'm not you. <laughs> and I, I may sound awful to some people, but actually that's a pretty beautiful time of it, life. It, isn't that nice? That, it and is. That, and that all a parent needs to do is have a little bit of recollection. Yeah, exactly. And see themselves at that same age. Um, but uh, they can be fooled into thinking that it's an entirely different world uh -huh. and uh, that then they have to really safeguard the child or protect them or, you know, rein them in or whatever. Or control. But yes, but it really was no different for your parents. The world at that time compared with their grandparents exactly. was equally perhaps looked dangerous. And perhaps those of us that are parents have always gone, oh gosh, it's so much harder than it was yes. for my parents. I was so much better it, than this. Exactly. <laughs> Which is exactly. not true at all, by the way. It, it may be, yes, there may be a little incremental difference, but yeah. the, the push is the same. The urge is the same. So. That of defining yourself in, um, you know, in your own mind and uh, who you are and so on, that that's... Does community us. give us permission to become more like the people we want to be? 
Does it limit I, us or does it free us is, real, is the question. That well, I think, that. Uh, again, it, it could be either or, uh -huh. or perhaps a combination of both. Because when you belong to a community, there, is, there has to be some kind of a compromise. Mm -hmm. In other words, what the community is saying. And it could be your own village. It could be, again, your religious community. That it's, uh, it may not be, uh, it may be, the agreement may be tacit. Mm -hmm. You know, but it is there nonetheless that as long as you adhere to uh, yeah. these values and this discipline, etc., then um, you're okay. But that maybe could for someone become like a straitjacket. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, you know, interestingly, uh, one of the areas I studied in my PhD program was creativity, and creativity is not license, it is freedom That's within right. structure. And what I hear nice. you describing is to optimally fit into a community of sorts. That's it, because um, the basic, the most fundamental teaching within the, the group to which I belong and that, uh, you know, informs my way of looking at many things, sure. is that the inherent nature of all souls is the same. Yes. And that comprises um, what would result in a belonging, you know, like peace and love and kindness, all of those wonderful qualities. And even though I acknowledge our sameness, mm -hmm. yet at the same time, no two of us are identical. Exactly. And so that I begin acknowledging our sameness, and then I can explore what makes you unique and so, not to be afraid of that. So that, that's really a beautiful concept because when we are creating an area that people can belong more easily, the ultimate value is that underneath all the differences there is a sameness. We there are souls sameness. and part yes. of the greater picture. That's right. And so, I mean, it's almost that unconditional love, mm -hmm. unconditional acceptance mm -hmm. that how can I reject you because, because we are at the core yeah, of the same. I'm rejecting myself and rejecting you. You are me and I am you. Exactly. That's fundamental. So. But there is a perhaps a bit of a crisis of belonging today, isn't there? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. where people don't feel they fit. They, they sometimes feel alienated from their own families or um, the group or whatever. You know, all of what are the, those things that would make you feel um, that you belong and, and being valued is one of them and, and having a purpose and being able to contribute yeah. as well, being able to give something. So belonging doesn't just mean you sit and you take. Ah. And, um, and so like you said earlier with adolescence, I don't see it as a bad thing, oh, you no. know, that, I, that I it, totally it can agree. have its sad element um, when, when people are really lost. Mm -hmm. um, but it can also have another one that it, it does um, force them, hopefully in a kind way, to reach for something within themselves, you know. You know, when you brought up that giving part of belonging, because often if we are hungry to belong, we almost see ourselves as, I need nourishment That's from right. that. That's right. That's right. Probably the shortcut is to take the focus off of our ego ourselves mm -hmm. and say, how can I help? How can I contribute? Exactly. And in that, it almost creates a good excuse to be there if we haven't quite given ourselves permission. Exactly. And then the thing is, I think that, that um, when that is the case, that automatically the community you belong to enlarges. It's yeah. much bigger. You're not limited anymore. You're not, your existence isn't you know, juxtaposed with, with any other group or uh, because of any other group, but that um, the whole thing of, of giving and providing, that yeah. you see that, yeah, this is what everybody needs to be doing and, you know, we can do it together. That it's yeah, what, you, what you said in that uh, reminded me of a, an old story of a person who wanted to, who was going up to the pearly gates and said, mm -hmm. you know, St. Peter said, you've been quite good. Uh, so I'll give you any wish. And he said, could I just take a glimpse of hell? 
Could I just say what? Take a glimpse of hell. Uh -huh, okay. And he goes down there, and this is wonderful banquet table. Right. And all this wonderful food, and the people are strapped to it, and they can't bend their arms, and they can't reach, you know, like this, and they can't reach up to their mouths, and they're wailing and crying. And he goes, "Oh my gosh, yes. how horrible! Forever." Yes. Yes. And then he says, "Now I'd like to get to heaven." Yes. And the people are in the same thing, but they're yes. feeding the people in front of them. Absolutely. Maybe that is the key it, to belonging. Think, think about it, like we often say, even within you know, our own organization, that um, the people who come, even though they may be coming, say, for a retreat or um, to take some nourishment right. for themselves, but as soon as they arrive, it's like, how can I help? And they win everybody's hearts. Exactly. And so people automatically embrace them. They want them to, to be there because they've, they've offered themselves, you know. Good. It's Thank you for this. That, oh, I've got pleasure. some nice new insights <laughs> from this conversation. And I hope you have as well. A sense of belonging is one of the most sought after experiences of life. If I want to experience this, let me let go of the grudges, of the tendency to see people's weaknesses, and let me look instead at what we share. Many times I walk through the world and I see a sea of strangers. But from this perspective, I can see a sea of souls having a human experience. From this perspective, I can see that we all share this journey of life in the physical dimension. We laugh. We love, we cry, we experience freedom, we experience our limitations, we experience truth, and we experience being blind to that truth. But we do all of this together. As souls, we are not strangers, but an eternal family of spiritual travelers. And when I look beneath the mask of differences, the mask of cultures, the mask of gender, I see that we are a sea of spiritual beings and that we belong to one supreme being. Let me just hold this awareness for a few moments and send light and love to every soul in the universe. In addition to sharing the journey of life, we also share a very special time together right now on this planet, a time of awakening where we're coming out of the darkness of thinking we're just bodily beings. And we're coming into the light of realizing how wondrous we are. But most importantly, we're coming into the light of realizing that we are one world family under the care of one supreme being. And though we have been through some dark times, there has never been a night that's lasted forever. So let me trust in the potential of every soul on this planet to rise up to the invitation of these times. And today, and even for the rest of my life, I can vow to see every soul I see as part of my family, as a fellow spiritual traveler who is doing their best on this planet. 
I can choose to let go of the vision of strangers and welcome the vision of brotherhood. This simple practice alone will give me the most sought after treasure of life, a sense of belonging. I hope some of the things that we've shared tonight maybe help your sense of belonging a little bit along the way. Thanks and good night.